Come and scandal, read all about it. Come and scandal, paper, sir. Paper, read all about it. Paper, paper. Come and scandal, read all about it. Oh, yes, Sir Dennis. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, minutes will be circulated tomorrow morning. Uh, we convene again next Friday. I take it you saw the midday edition, Sir Dennis? Yes, I did. Why pick on us? I could name half a dozen other departments. We're sitting pigeons. Blame it on the economic situation. All this rot about champagne and caviar. I mean, we are in business to sell natural gas to foreign customers. There's a last to crack that about the bubbling. Where do they get this information? Oh, I'll inquire. The caterers, I suppose. Well, they were spot on about the number of cases of champagne. Yes. It's a deliberate and intentional smear. It does our image no good, no good at all. My regards to Lady Gold. They're still on holiday, she? Yes, Carol's in Bermuda till next week. <laughs> and I expect you wish you were with her. Yes. Darling Magda. You know, this is the best Chinese food in London. The beauty of it is that no one else knows about it. You always choose the right place. It suits my mood. Sentimental. No, Dennis. One thing I like about you, you're too much of a gentleman ever to... Oh, I shouldn't count on it. Not tonight. I've had a bad day. Don't spoil it. Dennis, why did you first ask me out? You're nothing if not direct. So delightfully un-English. Tell me about Carol. What more is there to say? Do you usually take your holidays separately? There's nothing in that. The English summer, Carol loves the sun, I'm tied to a desk in Whitehall. I wonder what Carol would think about me. Would she mind you lending me this? It's very beautiful. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's a family heirloom. No, one thing my wife's not, and that's jealous. But I am. You? Yes. But Magda, we've had fun. Three wonderful, unexpected weeks. But you knew she was coming back. I certainly never tried to hide it. No. The perfect English gentleman. We've had fun, and that's all. Magda. You say I'm direct. If that is all, we'd better say goodbye. Please don't make a scene. Do be sensible. Goodbye, Dennis. Magda. I think it would be better if we didn't see each other again. Oh, Sir Dennis. Hawkins. Ah, good evening. Good evening. I didn't know you were an obituary. Oh, the best Chinese food in London and off the beaten track. Yes. That's what I like about it. Uh, would you excuse me? went away for a month and you met this fantastic glamour girl. Magda comes from a very good family in Austria. 
<laughs> Landowners near Graz, I believe. Ah, oh, that's very nice. But it didn't keep her from taking that brooch, did it? I lent it to her, simply for the night. Oh, I see. You lent her your wife's diamond brooch. Brilliant. How much is it worth, by the way? Well, sentimentally, it's priceless. But it's insured for about 10,000. Pounds? Yes. Have you gone over this with Magda? I told you we had a row. I tried phoning her, but she absolutely refuses to see me or to talk. If Carol comes back and that brooch is missing... You're in trouble. And in more ways than one. Wonder if Magda reads the papers, as I do. Well, what do you mean? Listen, I know that if there's another scandal right now, that Natural Resources Board just goes right down the drain, at least as far as you're concerned. I'll admit it's a very dangerous situation. Well, don't you think Magna knows that, too? I don't think you're being quite fair to the girl. Okay. What do I do when she and I get together? Well, it might save a lot of trouble if you simply broke into her flat and took the brooch. No, thanks. That's breaking and entering. It could be trouble. That won't be necessary. I do have a key. It's a purely temporary arrangement, of course. Then why don't you search her place? I can't go snooping around her things. Why not? You want that brooch back, don't you? Yes, of course I do. I tell you what, I'll do it if you take me there and you wait for me. All right. Sir Dennis Gold? Yes. My name is Reynolds. I wonder if I might have a word with you. It's a personal matter about your wife's brooch. I'm a jeweler. Your wife got in touch with us before she went away about an alteration to her diamond brooch. Oh, I see. She was very anxious for it to be ready when she came back. Oh, um, she gave us this note of authorization. Thank you. Yes, that seems to be in order. But I don't carry such things around. I mean, I'd hardly have it here. No, Sir Dennis? A valuable piece of such as that I always put into deposit. Yes, yes, how wise of you. But we do have a responsibility to Lady Gold. Yes, of course, Mr. Reynolds. Well, I'll collect the brooch in the next day or two and let you have it. I know you're a busy man, Sir Dennis. These jobs do take time and we uh, don't want to disappoint her, do we? Perhaps you'll be kind enough to telephone me and we'll collect it. Mayfair 39. Two, five.
3925. Ask for me. I'll deal with it personally. Well, that was a very well-timed coincidence. Oh, what do you mean? If your girlfriend has blackmail on her mind, it could be that the jeweler's putting the squeeze on for her. He had Carol's note. That seems genuine enough. Well, why don't you phone her and check it out? No, no, no. I'm reluctant to do that. Oh. Listen, maybe this will tell us something. Mac? Meine einzige geliebte Magda. Uh, excuse me, but I, my German is just not that good. We have not heard from you for over a month, and we are very worried. I wish you were safely home in Klagenfurt. I am sending you what money I can, but please do not tell your father. As you know, he has been unwell and will be retiring from the railways very soon. Railways? I thought her family were landowners in Graz. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> the railway. All right, you better get on to Magda. What do I offer her for the brooch? Anything you like, within reason. <laughs> Not exactly unapproachable. <laughs> Like a uh, scotch on the rocks, it's not too much trouble. I keep forgetting I'm in England. Oh, you have to ask for the ice. Oh, thanks for the hot tip. You learn. I'm not English either. Really? Well, I never would have known that. Where are you from? Graz in Austria. Oh. My family sent me here to learn the language. And you are American? No, ma'am, I'm a Texan. I've always wanted to go to America. Uh, what are you drinking? Oh, Creme de Mons Frappe. You want another one? Yes, please. Can we get another one of these? Yeah, Graz, that's a pretty nice place. I was there once. Oh, you know it. My family have estates and a castle outside. A real castle? Yes, medieval. Ah, well, it's not much, but it's home. It was built by the Teutonic Knights, high in the mountains. On one side, a sheer precipice, and on the other, a moat. And you'd never guess, there are snow-white swans on the moat. They pull a silver bell under the drawbridge when they are hungry. We feed them little cakes made of honey and almonds. And in the winter, the roaring log fires and the boar hunts in the snow. It's very beautiful. But it belongs to another age. Now, uh, why is your father still working for the railroad? I don't understand. Yes, you do. Your father's about to retire, isn't he? Magda? How do you know my name? Well, I have a friend who knows you, Sir Dennis Galt. Seems you've been telling him quite a few stories, too. You blame me. It was all so unhappy, so tragic. Father worked so hard to bring us up. He had a brilliant career in front of him. What happened? He should have been chief of the state railways. And then there was this dreadful accident. A head-on collision. Poor Papa. He will never work again. Honey, you're just going to have to make up your mind whether you're Cinderella or Little Orphan Annie or who. You don't believe me. No. Thanks. 
I was hired by Dennis Gall to find you and talk to you about a diamond brooch. You seem such a nice gentleman. I think you forgot to give it back. But he gave it to me. Well, that ain't the way I heard it. It was a birthday present. Magda, let's just say there was a misunderstanding. Now, you know that that brooch belongs to his wife, don't you? If you don't give it back, he's going to be in bad trouble. Shall we dance? This is a matter of interest. Where is that brooch? Well, it's quite safe in the bank. Well, if you return it, we'll forget that you forgot to give it back. And if I don't? Then the police will come in. I think a lot more will come out. The Home Office is pretty touchy about money, visas, things like that. You'll end up in court. Court? Dennis wouldn't do that, not to me. Yes, he would. And you wouldn't have a prayer. Couldn't you try it? The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Then I'd have to tell him the whole story about Dennis and me. So it is blackmail. Oh, Mag. Oh, please excuse me, my friend. Darling. I think we better go. Who's he? Come on, darling, I'll tell you later. And she's something else. And the brooch? Well, I think she still has it, but she's on another planet. You can't tell whether she's coming or going. She certainly doesn't know. But she can't really expect to get away with this. I think it's just a question of how much. Or we go to the police. Mm -hmm. I just have this cable. Please hand over brooches arranged. All perfectly OK. I've decided to return early. Love, Carol. Then you didn't call her, did you? I tried, against my better judgment. She wasn't at the hotel. They said she was away for a couple of nights. Where? They didn't know. Mm. Why don't you take a look outside that window? Hmm? Why? Just take a look. You know those two guys? They're friends of yours? I've never seen them before in my life. Who are they? Well, a couple of punks have been hanging around here all morning. Sure not just cleaning the sidewalk, though. Are you suggesting they're snooping on me? Well, who'd have any reason to do that? And certainly not Carol. Well, don't count it out. Those guys have been on the job since that jeweler came by. It's a pure coincidence. Coincidence again? Nah, I don't believe in coincidence. Especially when 10,000 pounds are involved. Now, what do you think of this guy, Reynolds? I don't know him from Adam. Well, he must have contacted your wife in Bermuda. Now, why would he do that? Surely that repair work can't be that urgent. Tell you what, why don't you give him a call? Mayfair 3925. Let's just see what's going on. All right. Mayfair 3925. Ask him what the name of his company is and uh, tell him he'll have that brooch tomorrow. We hope. Well, who's that speaking, please? Would you want, please? Uh, Mr. Reynolds, if he's there. Don't bother, Sir Dennis. You have the brooch? No, not yet. Well, I should tomorrow. Tomorrow? What's the holdup? You have a pretty strange tone for a jeweler, Mr. Reynolds. I don't think I like it too much. Like it or not, I warn you, if I don't have that brooch tomorrow morning, I shall contact Lady Galt. Do you have an address for a Mr. Reynolds? The phone number is Mayfair 3925. Hold on, please. I'm sorry, the number is not listed. Well, listen, ma'am, I have an appointment with him shortly, and I just lost his address. Uh, tried calling, but there's no answer. Be 
Mr. Scriber is ex-directory, and I am not authorized to give you his address. You could talk to the supervisor. Who's speaking, please? Forget it. Forget it. Listen, you better keep trying to get through to your wife, find out what's going on here. Well, I suppose Carol is entitled to do whatever she likes with her own jewelry. Of course, I'll talk to her as soon as she gets back. Heaven knows that's soon enough. It's only a week. All right, if that's the way you want it, I'll get back to Magda. Oh, it's marvelous. I hope I can manage to eat it. You'll make it. It's nice of you to invite me. I thought it was, considering. Considering what? For you, sir? No, thanks. What do you know about a man named Reynolds? Reynolds? What a damn name. McGill is much nicer. I'm not kidding, Magda. If you're involved with him, you're going to get in trouble. I've never heard of Mr. Reynolds. OK. But you better watch it, because he's just liable to send a punk down and try to get that brooch away from you. Oh, please don't spoil it. It's been such a nice lunch business. I'm sorry for Dennis. Then do something about it. No, truly I am. It's just that London is so expensive, and a working girl needs the money to get by. Not like this. Besides, you're not working, are you? Well, that's just the trouble. The English are so difficult about work permits. If only I'd finished my nurse's training. Nurse's training? When did you do that? What oh, didn't I tell you? I studied medicine at Vienna University. I was first in my year. I won the gold medal. Well, you have to show it to me sometime. Uh, it's, it's at home in Austria. Medicine is such a beautiful career. So satisfying. But I'd really like to get married. I should like an English husband. Or an American. And a house in the country. And four children. Why four? I don't believe in small families. Well, then you're going to have to get a nanny and a cook and a butler and a chauffeur to drive the rolls. I prefer a Mercedes. Magda, what do you want for that brooch? Now, let me think. How much is that? Well, it is a very good quality mink. You can see how they've worked the skins. Superb, isn't it? It's beautiful. We're asking 3,000. 3,000 pounds? No, sir. Guineas, of course. Of course. Uh, we do have less expensive coats, but I've... You never showed us any of those, did you? Could you put that one away until tomorrow? Certainly, sir. Mink is expensive, but uh, you can always look on it as a sort of investment. Mac, are you serious? Yep, the coat for the brooch. I'd like to think about it. Well, you think about it like this. Either you give me back that brooch and I'll write out a check for that coat. Or? Or the police. Very well. OK, let's go. Where? To the bank to get the brooch. It's shut. At three o'clock, they all do. Anyway, I have an appointment. I must go. What time do they open in the morning? Ten. Mm -hmm. I'll meet you at ten o'clock at your apartment. Mac, you darling. <laughs> Jim, I am sorry. I tried to ring. Quite all right. I've been telling myself for hours she'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Oh, darling, he was an old friend of the family. I couldn't disappoint him. Magda, you're so gullible. You must learn to say no sometimes. Old friends of the family get used to being disappointed every now and again. But he just arrived from America. I told you we have a ranch in Texas. He's only over here for a few weeks. He had news from my uncle. You know, they're so generous. Who are? The Americans. Do you know, after lunch at the Chanticleer, he offered to buy me a mink coat. 
fascinating and rich. Magda, if anyone's going to buy you a mink coat, it's going to be me. Jim, you're jealous. For the first time, I like it. Bully for you. Now, if you want anything, you tell me. Yes, Jim. You're too direct, too gullible. You see, there's lots of people about you waiting to take advantage of a girl in your position. I really think that you need somebody to look after you. Do I, Jim? Yes, I think you do. I really do. If you don't get out of my house, I'll call the police. Go ahead. Call them. Now, look, we don't want trouble. Give us the brooch. We haven't got all day. In the first place, that brooch belongs to my wife, and in the second, I haven't got it. Oh, come off it. I tell you, it's not here. A nice little ornament. Yes, so be careful with it. It's very valuable. Is it? Clumsy me. Get it. Sir Dennis Gart? Sorry, Sir Dennis is not. Are you all right? Yes. You call the police. Oh. Did you call the police? No. I call the police, the NRB will be front page news again. Listen, God, you better wake up around here sometime. Now, you can't treat these people as though they've been to Eden with you any longer. Not if you care about your wife, you gotta get the police in. It's Carol I am thinking of. I put in another call to Bermuda. Hello. Uh, this is Sir Dennis Gaunt's apartment. Okay, thank you very much. No, forget it. Thank you. Well, your wife's not available now, but she has been back to the hotel to pack. That means she could be back tomorrow. Before I walked into all of this, I was coming to tell you that Magna's ready to hand over that brooch now. She is? Yeah, in exchange for a mink coat. Cost you about 3000 3000 Guineas. <laughs> Excuse me. gave me quite a turn. I'm sorry, but uh, I was looking for Miss Kurtz. Oh, she's left. She moved out? Yeah, she left early this morning. Uh, you must be uh, McGill. Yep, that's me. She said to say she was sorry and um, asked me to give you this. Is that all she asked you to give I'm so sorry I wanted to meet you, but Jim put down his foot. I don't know how to tell you. He's wonderful and we're getting married at once. Thank you for everything, Magda. Anything wrong? No, no. Everything's fine. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Uh, Any time. I'll keep that in mind. Come in. Mr. McGill to see you, Sir Dennis. Mr. McGill, I asked you in no circumstances to visit me here. Well, just read this. I think it may explain something to you.
Yes, I know. I saw it in the paper. The whole future of the Natural Resources Board seems to depend on the yellow press. Well, she really moves around, doesn't she? Uh, excuse me for asking, but uh, who is the gentleman, Jim? The Deb's delight. He collects them, especially rich heiresses and wards of court. Does he have any money? I doubt it. He certainly spends it. Then they have something in common. I had a cable from Carol this morning. She's flying in this afternoon. What time? 3.35, London Airport. And what time is it now? Quarter to 12. You have a phone book? Yeah. Desert. E-Z-A-R-D. It's not a very common name. Hey, he's got a great address. Good old gentleman's gym, just around the corner. I'll talk to you later. Uh, what's your secretary's name? Sybil. Sybil. Well, you have nice taste. Just checking Mr. Ezard's apartment number. Oh, number five, but he seems to be out. Yes, he does. Uh, does that mean it's this morning? For the wedding? No, not till after lunch. And they needed a special license for that. <laughs> well, old gentleman Jim's quite a boy, isn't he? Well, I don't mind telling you, sir. I'm glad to see him hooked. Um, listen, I'm uh, doing a background story on this wedding. There's quite a bit of interest in it. I need a little information. One make five pounds? Oh, we get a lot of society reporters, gossip writers and the like. Very high-class property, this, you know. So have a lot of high-class visitors? You should have seen the ones that rolled up. Whew, needed spanking. All of them girls from good families, nice cars, expensive clothes. What they saw in him, I don't know. And some of them married. I know I recognised them. We'll be glad to see the back of him. Is he going to give up the apartment? Oh, landed himself an heiress. An Austrian girl, I believe. The landlords will be pleased. And it's not only the rent, or was some tradesman or other done in him. You are a reporter. Sure, I am. Listen, I think that's going to help. Uh, at least it's a good start. Oh, thank you, sir. But I'd really like to interview him myself. Oh, he'll be back. He'd better be. The wedding's at half past four. OK, thanks a lot. Two-bit private eye. Ex-American intelligence. You say you followed into Gentleman Jim's flat? Yeah. Well, there could be a connection. McGill's working for Galt. 
Gaul's been amusing himself with this Austrian piece who shows up here with Gentleman Jim. You read the papers, don't you? Yeah. I've been after Ezra for the past two months to pay his gambling debts, right? Now he sends me a cheque for 5,000 pounds, just like that. Well, you don't need a crystal ball. He's got the brooch. Yeah. Well done. Now, you get back to Azard right away and tell him I've got a prior claim. Bring him back here if necessary. Ah! Oh! Oh, oh, goodness! Oh. <laughs> well, half of it's on the floor. Oh, well, too much, Maggie. Made me dizzy. <laughs> Jim, darling. Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Prosy. <sighs> Mag, you are darling. Yeah, thank you. My goodness, Monte Carlo. Yes, isn't it wonderful? We're driving down through France and then spending a fortnight on his yacht. Well, he has a yacht, too. Oh, actually, it's not his, but he has a friend. Jim knows everybody. I think he must. You know, he's the only person I know who has everything. He's just too wonderful. Too marvelous for words. That's right. Well, hon, don't you think you're forgetting something, all this excitement? Forgetting something? What? That brooch, Magda. That brooch. What brooch? Now, don't mess around. Listen, you're marrying a very wealthy guy. You're gonna go out on a yacht. Honeymoon in France, that's pretty nice. Don't make trouble for yourself. I don't want to spoil it, but if I don't get that brooch, I'm going to go straight in there and tell Gentleman Jim everything. Oh, Mac, you wouldn't. I would. But I would give you the brooch if I had it. You didn't give it to Reynolds, did you? Reynolds, no. It was worth so much, we thought it better if Jim looked after it. Okay. Now, do you talk to him or do I? You. But you promised me. I can trust you, Mac. I hope so. Oh, Jim, darling, come and meet my old friend, Mac. He brought me some beautiful flowers. Well, you're a very lucky man, Diamond Jim. Uh, Gentleman Jim. Thank you. Well, I see you at the registry office. Is they now? Oh, yes. It's very bad luck for us to turn up together. Well, till 4.30, then. You will come back, won't you? We'll see. Goodbye, darling. Bye. Well, congratulations. Uh, listen, I don't think Magna told you about me. But, uh... Oh, let's get your champagne. I was just talking to Magna about this brooch I gave her a while back. And she wants to return it, naturally. But you gave her? Well, that was a long time before you came along, though. Oh, well, I didn't realize that. Well, she probably felt kind of awkward about telling you. Anyway, it cost me a lot of money. To tell you the truth, I really need it now. Yes, of course you do. Well, it's a tiny bit awkward, but, um... You see... My money's all tied up in a family trust. It'll all come through eventually, of course, but I'm not interested in your money. I just want to get my brooch back. Yes, beautifully put. Well, the trouble is that I've deposited the brooch at my bankers for security. Oh, no. Why, what's your problem? Ezard, you're marrying a wealthy girl. She has castles in Austria, estates. Now, isn't that enough for your bank manager? Well, he makes life awfully difficult for me, you see. My bank man, you know what they like to mean. Yeah, I do. Especially when they're dealing with people in your position. What? Well, Ezra. I know you don't have a penny. You haven't even paid your rent here for months. You left a trail of unpaid bills from here to wherever you've been. What on earth are you talking about? Do you think you'd better go? No. Not till I get that brooch. Yes, I thought you might say that. 
Look, I'll come absolutely clean with you. I have, as I said, I've deposited that brooch with my bank as a security for my overdraft. And how much is that running? Just, uh, 4,000 pounds. 4,000. Well, it's probably nearer five now. Okay. How about if I settle that for you? What a marvelous idea. Sybil, would you get my coat for me, please, and have the car brought round? Yes, Sir Dennis. Oh, there's an incoming call. Will you take it? Oh, who is it? Mr. McGill. Hello, McGill. Look, can it wait? I'm just on my way to the airport. I located that brooch. It's at Ezard's bank, but it'll cost you about 5000 to get it out. 5000 Yeah, he's a little overdrawn, so I'll have to settle it for him. Look, last time it was £3,000 for a mink coat. Now £5,000 overdrawn. But we didn't use the 3000 Oh, look, I think it's a bit steep. Well, it's up to you, but if you want that brooch back, just make out that check and leave it with Sybil. Customer for you, Bobby. Mm -hmm. What's that? Going away, Alvin. <sighs> Betty, the governor wants to see you, boy. Look, I've sent him a check. He won't bounce. He's got that. It's the brooch he wants. What brooch? What are you talking about? Anyway, it's nothing to do with pagoda. Listen, the governor wants it or you. And move. Well, look, I've sent Come him on, a check. Move. I can't do more than that, can I? What the hell's he said? Shut your mouth and get out anyway. In the corner. Did you have good weather? It was all right. Take it gone. Must have a good. I thought you said your name was Reynolds. No, just a business name. Welcome home. I trust you had a good holiday. Carol, is this man really a jeweler? Yes, of course. Then why did he send two thugs round to threaten me for the brooch? You mean you didn't give it to him? No. I'm sorry, Sir Dennis. Just a misunderstanding. But now that your wife is back, I'm sure she'll want the whole thing settled amicably. Amicably? This man's no more a jeweler than I am. I think you owe me some sort of an explanation. Mr. Vigoda has a gambling club. I lost a lot of money there. I couldn't pay it. I couldn't ask you. I told him he could have the brooch. He is entitled to it. Not by English law, he isn't. Not for a gambling debt. I'm working for your husband, ma'am. My name's McGill. Nevertheless, I'm quite sure that Lady Gold will want to honor her debt. So perhaps you'll give me the brooch. I believe Mr. McGill has it. It's not in payment for a gambling debt. What do you mean, McGill? You know what I mean. So does Lady Gaw, don't you, ma'am? Now, do you want me to give it to her? Carol? No, I don't. He's quite right. This is something I didn't want you to know about. But go to find out about it, and 
He threatened me with a lot of publicity. The way to a muter, and he just kept on telephoning. He was trying to blackmail me. Black? And that's something you can answer to the law for. Yes. Yes, you have a point. Goodbye, Sir Dennis. Come into the club sometime. You'll be most welcome. Someone I met at the casino club. It wasn't very serious. And if it had come out, it would have been very unpleasant for both of us. I see. Who was it? Jim Azard. Azard? Are you telling me that in spite of what it would do to my career if there were a scandal, you've been carrying on with Gentleman Jim Azard? At least I've been honest with you, darling. You tell me a thing or two. In the first place, what's that man McGill doing with my brooch? He's a pretty big storyteller in his own right, you know. What do you mean? He's as broke as you are, huh? Broke? You mean he hasn't any money? Not a cent. Oh, dear. Poor Jim. But we have the brooch. Maybe we could sell that. No? No. I'm buying you a ticket back to that medieval castle of yours before you get in deep trouble. Matt, darling, I think you need a second. No, I don't. <laughs> but I've studied shorthand. No. I can talk in five different languages. No. 